Okay, hi there, welcome to the fourth session in six. Uh, this is a short Head Start course for Year 11 students who are thinking, expecting, hoping to take A-level economics in September as a way of introducing them to a wonderful subject. This series of six uh, lessons and sets of videos is looking at behavioural economics. Uh, we've been through nudge theory, psychological biases, rationality, we're going to take some of those ideas and think about a couple of important issues, tackling the obesity epidemic and also tackling gambling addiction before having a special session, behavioural economics, at the movies. Obesity is clearly a growing problem around the world. The latest estimates is that well over a quarter of a billion children, for example, are predicted to fall into the obese category, a body mass index of more than 30, I think, by 2030. And that's probably an increase of 100 million within the space of, of a decade. You can see here the rise in obesity in both men and women as a percentage. Uh, drawing on data published by the uh, Max Rosa and his team at Our World in Data, based in Oxford. Obesity is a huge problem in the UK. In particular, if you look at 15 to 19 year olds, this data is for 2016. But the UK has one of the highest obesity rates amongst teenage uh, children uh, well ahead of well ahead of countries like Finland, Denmark, Germany, uh, and of course significantly higher, twice as high as uh, obesity prevalence in Italy. And the UK again comes pretty high overall, with the highest obesity amongst adults in 2016, just a shade below Malta. Uh, stark contrast there with countries like Italy and Denmark. Obesity clearly also places huge costs on healthcare systems. This is a chart from Statista showing average annual health spending per person per capita linked to directly due to obesity from 2020 to 2050. So they're forecasting uh, that uh, there is going to be a huge increase in the cost of treating uh, and mitigating the effects of obesity, taking up a sizable percentage of, of healthcare spending in, in some of those countries, in, in particular countries like Germany and the United States. There are many, many economic, social economic, health demographic factors behind obesity. I'm not going to go through them all in more detail. I'm hoping that you'll be interested enough in this topic to do your own reading and research on this and find out a little bit more. If I was to pick out a few sort of contributory factors, one is what, what the economists call information failures. So people often don't have uh, the ability to make fully informed choices about the Calorific, calorific nutritional content of the food and drink they're consuming. Economists call that an information failure. And as a result, they are boundedly rational. They can't make fully rational decisions. The, the real price of many processed foods has come down in, in the last decade or two as, as we move to economies of scale in food production, mass production, volume production. Uh, and, uh, of course, increasingly, a lot of competition between supermarkets to sell cheap processed food. And the cost of processed food, which is often quite high in salt and sugar and fat, uh, has come down not just relative to inflation, generally, but relative to people's incomes. I think it's important to think in the long term about the, the impact of high, persistently high levels of income inequality, and growing social economic deprivation as a cause of obesity, particularly families most at risk, uh, who literally, in many cases, cannot afford to eat healthily because of uh, very limited budgets. We've seen the rise of the service sector, uh, the relative decline of heavy uh, energy intensive manufacturing, shipbuilding, steel and coal mining and car making, etc. And perhaps a shift towards more sedentary work based service-based work, which has reduced the degree of physical activity at work. You certainly notice as a teacher that if you're teaching at school normally, many more steps in the day than if you're teaching online, sat in front of a laptop. And in the service sector, the rapid expansion, huge growth of convenience food, coffee shops, sandwich shops, takeaways, etc., uh, become ubiquitous and, of course, influencing choices. Now, I think those are some of the key reasons behind growing obesity, but clearly I'm not, I'm not going to be able to cover all of these. It's just my selection. It raises interesting questions, of course. These are the kind of questions that we look at in A-level economics. 
What should governments do, if at all? Should the government do anything about this? Well, if, if you think it should, what are your government policy suggestions for tackling the epidemic of obesity in the UK and in other countries? Uh, and what I would do in my lesson when I was teaching this is we'll have a breakout session and small groups will be trying to think of at least three policies that could address this issue and hopefully justify them. And because this is a session on behavioural economics, at least one of the ideas uh, has to be a behavioural nudge that might address the growing issue of obesity. Crucially, if you're going to change, if you're going to tackle obesity and uh, and tackle it, not just in the immediate time period, but over a, a generation, uh, it means changing behaviour at scale, changing the behaviour of millions of people. And that raises an interesting question about whether behavioural nudges on their own are sufficient. Well, in the second video of this of two in this session, uh, we will look at the East framework and have a little think about some of the nudges that could be used to encourage healthier eating.